Hello and welcome to Black Hills Influence Podcast. I am Chris, along with Brian, and this week we're going to take something a little bit different. We're going to play the Get to Know Your Podcast Host game. In front of Brian and I, we have a few decks of cards that have questions on them, and we will flip them over and answer those questions. So for those who are looking to uh, get to know us a little bit more, this will be kind of a fun little exercise. Yeah, it's this comes as a <clears throat> as a reaction, I'll say, to a couple people asking us, like, hey, who, this is mostly my friends, who's Chris? What's Chris about? Like, where does he work? How old is he? I know he has a wife and kids. Like, what? what is Chris all about? And I proceed to tell them that, yeah, he works in the marketing field, lives here in Rapid, grew up here in Rapid, um, good friend of mine. And then I go, you know... I don't really know that much about it. I do, too. I do. Well, you do. Yeah. But I realize that we should do an episode like this. I think people will find it interesting to get to know you and I a little bit better. I actually work for the CIA. I wasn't supposed to tell anybody Now you don't. Well, yeah. I'm ready. Let's do it. I'm I'm ready to get out of the game. All right. So we have these cards in front of us. I'll shuffle them up. I'll go first. I got a good one for you right here. Ready? Oh, boy. Chris. What are your top three goals, and what are you doing to get there? Ooh. I feel like we need just like 30 seconds to think about that. No. Just off it. the cuff? Yeah. My top three goals. I want to be financially stable that I could retire at an early age. That's goal number one. Number two, I want to raise a family with proper morals and ethics i like that number three is this like a long-term goal yeah. i guess i've been saying long-term goals i want i don't know I, those are my top two right now okay i'm so just gonna go with the top two. given those top two what are you doing this month or what have you done in the last 30 days as a family to work yourself towards financial freedom so for financial freedom we're paying more um, for our mortgage, sure. we're paying a little bit more yeah. every month towards your principal, right? And then we are also um, doing a thing that's very hard to do. It's called the budget and sticking with it. <laughs> so you know, um, we do a lot of meal prep now. I like it. saves a lot of money. And on yeah, instead of going out to eat, yep. I will go home for lunch and make whatever's either either leftovers or make it like a sandwich or something quick yeah. so then I can go back. So being financially stable in that because you know calculating the money that you spend every day on food alone. I it mean adds up fast. You know you go to Starbucks or some fancy coffee place that's $5 for a little bit of coffee and if you do that every day that's over $30 a week just in coffee. Then add if you go to McDonald's or whatever. Yeah, it's roughly probably what ten dollars a time you go. Oh, at least. I mean, it might be eight dollars this day and eleven dollars this day, but I think it's going to average out to ten dollars. So you're going to spend like a hundred dollars a week in foodage. Yeah, we'll say for lunch. For lunch and maybe breakfast. Yeah, but and what's crazy to me about that with on budget. Is that's four to five hundred dollars a month? Yeah, that you spend it, only on lunch and only for you, right? You know, I know people that spend four to five hundred dollars a month on groceries as a whole, and it mm-hmm. feeds a family of five. Right, that's crazy to think about, and I think it's awesome that you're well, working. Yeah, on and that. especially with you know when you have kids and your spouse, I mean that's that's a lot of money going out the window just just to eat. Yeah, you know so. And especially if we can make meals that feed more people and we have leftovers, that's one less time that I have to pay for a meal. Even better, yeah, because then you can have it for lunch the next day or whatever. Yeah, so that's that's my thing. I love it. Are we going to go off of yours? My top off three your goals? question? Your top three goals or um, what do you want to do? I'll give you a couple different personal goals and a business goal. Business goal is I'd like to get my business to over $500,000 in billing. Mm. this year that's very nice um which for some of you listening isn't going to be a lot but for some that's going to be mind-blowing half a million dollars depending on where you're at yeah depending where you work depending where you're at depending on what you do 
Um, that's a big goal of mine. I, uh, well, I pay myself very minimally right now to make sure that the business still has cash flow. Hmm. So I can make sure I can pay employees um, and everything else and be healthy there. But at the end of this year, at the end of 2020, or 2021, excuse me. Do you know what year it is, Brian? <laughs> what it's, day is it? 2020.2. I would really like this to be a $500,000 business. Yeah. Um, and here's the deal. I mean, the way I look at goals is I can shoot for 500000 and if I get to three hundred, I'll be... Just tickled pink too. You know what I mean, right? If you shoot for two fifty and you miss it, you you still went for two fifty. But if you shoot for five hundred and you get to three hundred, you still got to three hundred. Mm-hmm. So it's not a fail if you don't make that goal. It's and there's a I don't want to say a break even point because that's not the right term. But there's a I don't know what the number is. But there's a number like if I hit underneath this number, it wasn't a good year. Sure, does that make sense? Yep, that makes sense. Um. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that math needs to be and whatever. It doesn't matter. Well, and that has to be very hard, too, since it's your first year in business. Like, you don't know exactly what the cost of operations well, is going to be. first year of full-time business. The problem was starting this business January 1 of During a pi- pandemic and everything is closed. <clears throat> well, I started it beforehand. It was great for two months. Sure. And then March, April, May, June, July it was very hard last year. So, you know. Technically, I don't have a full calendar year in because last year is a write-off for a lot of people. Um, I like that term, but keep going. <laughs> give you one other goal, you know, on the family side is to uh, keep growing the family and just spend more time with the kids and the wife this summer. I've noticed uh, that I don't, I spend time with them, but I need to be more cognizant of being present instead of being there. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, I want to do some more camping this year. I'm going to do some more hiking, get the kids out in the hills and X, Y, Z. Nice. I, I, would, I just shuffled the deck and I found the question I was going to ask you and I thought I kept it? it on top, but I what shuffled it? it in the deck. The question, what's the funniest name you can think of for a pet? For a pet? For a pet. I think it's funny when you give them a human name. Like, if you have a cat named Larry, it's kind of weird. <laughs> you know what I Larry mean? Larry McTickle Scratch. Yeah. It's, you know, something like that. Uh, that <laughs> makes things kind of like, what's your dog? Because you're used to, like, buttons or, you know, whatever the case may be. But if your dog's name is Larry, you're like, what? You're taking Larry to the vet? Who's Larry? Who's Larry? What happened to Larry? Oh, he's my German Shepherd. We're going to have to put Larry down. Anyway. Well, okay. Now, I found the actual question. What things do you do every day that you wish could be automated? Getting my kids ready for daycare in the morning. Oh, I'm with you. (laughs) (laughs) My wife and I were, Kayla and I were just talking the other day about, she'll usually leave for work at like 7.50, 8 o'clock. Because she has court or whatever. She has to get out of the house. So it leaves me with the minions to get them going. Some days we're out of the house by 8.15. And then I swear to God, there are some days where we leave the house at 8.55. Yeah, I don't. I mean, the difference is is the kids' attitudes for the morning, right? If yep. they wake up crabby, they wake up happy, you know, whatever. They want breakfast, you know, what, et cetera, et cetera. If I could automate that first hour of my morning, mostly getting the kids ready to right. go would be yep. amazing. I'm I'm with you 100. percent the The morning routine and also the going to bed routine. Your going to bed routine sounds absolutely frightening. It's it's terrible right now, but yeah. it's one of those goals i'll say maybe yeah. th- maybe that's my number four goal yeah is getting them down in a timely manner i know that there's apps and all this other stuff that's out there i just personally don't believe in a screen to put my child to bed oh sure and you know I what think i mean there's a lot of studies that would support you on that too and i think unless we put a you know a political debate on or something that they're not interested in and that might bore them <laughs> <laughs> to to go to bed earlier. I don't know, but we'll see about that. All right. We I mean, we will. So we full disclosure. Uh he's now 2. He's turned 2 last weekend and our oldest is going to be 4 in April. So 4-year-old and 2-year-old both boys uh some nights we'll try and get them in pajamas and stuff at say 7 7:30 mm-hmm. and we might watch a part of a movie for 15 sure. minutes, but they know like, that is time. 
if it, you know, we're going to watch this for 15, 20 minutes and stop it at a good point in the story because uh, for God knows we've watched this movie 15 times. So you know where a good stopping point you is. You know where a good stopping point is. But then they know now that it's bedtime. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oldest will go to his room. Uh, my wife might read a book to him or sure. so. But he, he will go to bed now, which do you, is awesome. Do you divide and conquer on that yeah. every night? Yeah. One That's what we one do. And the other one takes the other one. Yeah. And we'll, we'll just swap every other night. <laughs> so we can't swap that. anymore uh, because our youngest knows that. What's up? Yeah. My... Like, oh, dad's a pushover. Listen, so, uh, listen, honey, I'm sorry I'm saying this, but <laughs> the youngest one knows that you're a pushover. And oh, it's Kayla. Oh, yeah, I had to put the youngest one to bed. So oh, so I don't mess around. You're putting the foot down. Yeah. Okay. I'm the enforcer in the house. There's always a lover yeah, and an enforcer yeah. in the house, and I'm the bad guy. Mm, so I understand. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, our youngest has to go to bed with me. Ooh, Chris, uh, what characteristic are you most known for? I think that's a super interesting question. Okay, let's let's up the ante on that. What? I'll answer, and then you can answer the question regarding me, and I'll answer the question regarding you. Mm, interesting. Like, what do I think is your greatest? This Let is, me read this, this is again. Scary. What characteristic are you most known for? You go first. For myself. Yeah. For answer for your own question. For my own self, I'm going to say my characteristic. I'm most known for is my optimism Mm. or my wit. Sometimes I say some stuff that (laughs) is way left field, but very funny. Um, Well, at least to yourself. Well, to me, I'm hilarious. (laughs) I'm absolutely hilarious. Whether or not you guys think it is, that's that's another thing. But that's what I think. I think uh, I'm always optimistic. I try to engage people when I meet them. Sure. Um. With a smile and like, hey, how you doing? Just kind of yeah, give them a fair shake, doing that sort of thing. Yeah, that that would be. Uh, my I'll answer. say, the characteristic you're most known for to me, like when I first met you, we don't even we've talked about this before. We don't even really know exactly how we first. It was met. just the circles that we were in. It I was kind. It just kind of worked out that way, right? Yeah, I would say the characteristic you're most known for to me, the one thing I will always remember about you. Oh God, it's not bad. Mm-hmm. Is you're consistent. Oh, that's very nice. But to a fault, probably. To a fault. Mm. Right? Yep. Um, very consistent, like coming in here. We record this every Thursday around lunchtime, just full disclosure. Coming in here every single Thursday. You know, I, I'd say I'm more flippant on time than you are. Mm. And I think that's because I'm running this. And, there's, and stuff comes up. Right. Right. You know, but that you have is, to be flexible. I have to be. Right. Right. But on the negative side is you enjoy the consistency of normal everyday life, which isn't a yeah. bad thing. No, I yep. know the goals that you have. Sure. In your career. Mm-hmm. And it's sometimes you got to break that consistency. Right. And that's, that's what I'm getting and that's at. a, and that's a habit that is so hard to break. Oh, it's terrible. You know, and it's almost, we'll do a slight sidebar. It's like being a musician. And what? I'm a drummer, so yep. I have to be precise. Yeah. Because if the drummer is not on time, meaning like they're not, if you're playing with a click, you'll understand that if you're a musician. But a click is a metronome. It claps yeah. in your head all the time. If you are not on that click, you will basically train wreck the whole thing the whole band is off. the whole band is off off. now there are some instances that you could be off but the other people that are playing with you could be off with you because they're good enough because they are good enough to recognize that yeah Yeah. but i am a person that i have to be here yep like this yep have i always been that way Absolutely not. Well, I, and I think that's a good thing. It's a trained be, thing. Correct. It's a It's a trained and learned behavior. Yep. But, okay, same question. Uh, okay. What characteristic am I most known for? Uh, a couple people will tell you that I am most known for being able to start a conversation with anybody. Mm. Um, and And some would say... That I would flirt with almost anybody. I think it's the same thing. But some people will say that 
Uh, That's not true. I c- oh, it's bad. Sideways glance. And it's been like that since high school. Um, it, that's what I'll go with. I, <laughs> I have a lot, but I don't want to. I had to breathe on that one. I don't like, want to oh, self- what, I, don't what should I say about that? self-incriminate myself. No, I think, I think you're right. I'm with you there. Um, I think you're, the characteristic that you're most known for, this is going back to when yeah, we yeah, yeah, first yeah. met. Yep. Yeah in our interactions together is your confidence. Oh yeah. That and that's not a boastful thing or anything like that, but you are confident enough in yourself that when you go talk to somebody, it's like you're norm from cheers. You're you know everybody. Yeah. You know, and that and that's great because that way you treat them like family or you treat them like you're you're their best friend. Well, it's like I said, I try and give everybody a fair shake. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, I am not uh, I'm not shy enough that I won't push back right away with meeting right. somebody. If and if I know you're not, uh, I'm not going to be a jerk about it. But if you're not correct on something, I will correct You'll you very that. politely. You right. know what I mean? Yep. Um, especially on a topic that I'm very knowledgeable about. Like, hey, you know, that's not how this works. Um, that's not how the force works. But there's a lot of people that. Uh, will correct you in a very egotistical way. I'm right. I try and be very nice about it. No, that's not right at all. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> You're unbelievable. Hey, wait, it's my question. Sorry. Ooh, who would you most like to sit next to on a 10 hour flight and why? Oh, okay. This is- Other than me. Oh, geez. Because that would be fun. Uh, We have talked about going to Hawaii and doing a podcast from Hawaii. I think remote locations would be fun. Uh, Let me ask you this question, because it'll be the difference between me crying or not. Alive or dead? Ooh. Because I would give about anything to be on a 10-hour flight with my dad. Yeah. No, that's... You know what I'm saying? Now you're making me cry. I'm just saying. No, that's that's huge. Yeah. 10 hours would be... It's a long time. Insane. That is a shift at work now, for some people. Now, I will, oh, Jesus Christ, we can't talk about this for too long because I will start crying. I was a young kid, and we went to either Star Wars or Harry Potter. I couldn't tell you now. I was probably sure. 12, 13 years old. Four-hour movie, let's say. My dad fell asleep like half hour in. You know, you know the dad big thing. Dude. The dad thing. Yeah, yeah. So, But I bet you if we went on a 10-hour flight, you'd It'd probably asleep. be like that. <laughs> So I get like maybe a half hour. Anyway. No, that's that's a good question. Um, alive. Uh, I would love to have a 10-hour flight with like a Simon Sinek. Ooh. Um, Very insightful. Uh, and not even really to like pick his brain the whole time. I would like to just have a conversation. Like... Yeah. Learn, like, how does a Simon, and I could research this a little bit more too and probably come up with the answers, but how does a, how does he get to where he is? Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Who, who deemed him as knowledgeable as he is? Yeah. yeah. Like, who gave him the crown for the influence? Well, and like, I'd like to ask him about his teenage years. Like, how did this start? Because you have to have a curiosity Mm -hmm. to want to learn more about the human psyche behind leadership and motivation. Right. That's what I want to know. And like when we bring guests on here, I care 20 million times less about their job than I do about them. Right. Like I want to know what makes them tick. Yeah, exactly. So you got to know how it's made. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, well who, who would you want to be with for 10 hours? No, I'm going to start crying because I'm well, thinking about it. Yeah. Um, I'll go with the alive person first. Sure. I'm going to go with. Bob Iger. Who's that? He is the former CEO of Walt Disney Company. Oh, wow. That'd be fun. I think... I'm reading a book of his. Okay. And it's called Ride of a Lifetime. It's his autobiography. And... Oh, look at that. that I just pulled a card and it said, give me a book review. What's your latest review? And, and it's really insightful on in how like his leadership yeah. has kind of progressed and how he does things. I, I would love to pick his brain on some of those things. See, and that'd be super fun. Yeah. And if that's, see, we're a lot alike in this regard. Less about Disney and more about, hey, what changed? Where, yeah. Where did you come from? How did this progress yeah. into what you yeah. are today? Yeah. I think that was huge. 
Um, as for dead, I would say my best friend, Nick. That we were talking about earlier. Yeah, he was a police officer that was killed in the line of duty about 10 years ago. And Here in Rapid, correct? It, yeah. Yep. So I think that would be 10 hours very well spent. It, if it, it was that. brings up an interesting point that I don't think a lot of people talk about enough. Saw a video clip months ago and it stuck with me ever since. Because I'm very sensitive to this topic like with my father. Mm-hmm. The guy asked another fella, how often do you see your parents? And he said, I don't know, once or twice a year. Whatever the example is. Sure. At Christmas time and a birthday. You know, whatever. Say twice a year. Right. How often, how much time do you spend with them? I don't know, probably five or six hours total, right? Because you got hotel rooms, you know, five or six hours of quality time twice a year. So you have 10 hours a year to spend with a loved one. Times that by how many years they might have left. In this example, he said, oh, they're 75 years old. He might pass away in five years. So you only have... 40 to 60 hours left with a parent, yeah. with a friend, with a brother or sister or whatever. And I think about that a lot because I'm, I try and be very intentional about who I spend my time with mm-hmm. because of that, right? Right. Like my mom, comes, she lives in Iowa. She comes out here as much as she can, and I try and spend as much time with her as I can while she's here because mm-hmm. I don't get back to Iowa enough to spend time with her. Sure. Now, she's 63 years old. She might have 20 years left, but that might only be 100 times. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. I'm with you. So, I mean, and it's a big regret of mine that I didn't spend more time with my dad while he was here, right? But I was 19, and he was 52. Right. You 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 almost take that for granted a little bit because you're like, You absolutely do. They're in... You know, they're in their 50s and life expectancy is almost, what, 85 Whatever the number is, yeah. So, I, yeah, I mean, you think, oh, well, I have 30 more years to to hang out with my dad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Get to watch the grandkids grow up, you know, blah, 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 blah. So take the time to spend with friends and loved ones or whatever that mean the most to you because you truly don't know if you have 20 years left with them or two years, and that two years might only be... 10 dinners right or you know 10 yeah. lunches or 10 movie nights or you know whatever whatever it is you don't until i started breaking things up like that i didn't realize how little time i have with even friends that i have mm-hmm. i spend more time with you than i spend with almost anybody else because we do this every single week yeah anyway i love it all right back on <laughs> well, <laughs> now that we're depressed no <clears throat> i'm not depressed about it at all it's a real thing that people need to talk about and be honest with themselves about when were your parents most disappointed in you chris oh <laughs> ouch when were they most disappointed in me i would like to say they weren't ever um I don't believe that yeah, that's not second. that's not even a, a lick of truth <laughs> <laughs> um wow okay we're going in deep I, it was the next this card this is these I, are i want depth. a new new card no okay Can i pass yeah i would like to pass on this one no the most disappointing my parents have been in me i would say was um for college mm. i had a rough spot where i wasn't doing the greatest in my in your studies? In my studies, okay. we'll say. I also was renting an apartment. And my roommates kind of left me high and dry. So I was on a high-end apartment. By yourself. By myself, trying to cover the rent. My car broke down during this time. I'm working at Walmart. You were in bad shape. <laughs> I was in really bad shape. Yeah. And then, you know, because my parents are like, wow, how is he burning through... <laughs> What is this he doing cash? With he's life? not doing well in school. Like, is he yeah. on, on drugs? And yeah. I'm like, Wait, well, from their perspective, per, you could understand. Absolutely. And, yeah, yeah. and it's not like, you know, you have that real, I don't have that relationship with my parents that I can just be open and honest with them a hundred percent of the time. 
that's a very rare relationship regardless. Right. It's like, oh, hey, yeah, I had a really good day in sociology or whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, whatever. But so when things are going south for me, I will kind of start to clam up and just really try to grind it out to get out of that situation. Yeah, you're going to put walls up to those that you don't want to disappoint. Right. Until like, you're Mom, able to Dad, break through I can't, that wall. I can't your take own. your call because I am studying or I am working extra shifts so I can pay for the rent of this ridiculous apartment that I'm in by myself now. <laughs> yeah, I think that was probably the most disappointed so because... Did you, did you finally tell them? Yes. Oh, that was bad. And they were like, it was, what it was literally. It was literally, at that point, it was the last month and a half of my whole college career. And they're like, all right, well, looks like you're going to have to commute every day mm-hmm. from Rapid to Spearfish, which... You know, it's not a huge. It's not terrible. It's not a huge commitment, but again, it's every day there that and back. You have to drive there and back, mm-hmm. and so yeah, that was tough. That was a <laughs> tough time. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think back, and like I think a lot of people can answer that. Uh, you know, your most disappointing time was I'm making this up was in high school when you got caught drinking at a party. Sure, was a failed test or project in school, right? I think there's a lot of different answers on that. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never had a drop of alcohol in my life. I've never done any drugs in my life, so I can't... Not saying I haven't disappointed my parents, (laughs) but like I don't have that uh, crutch of an answer to fall back on. Sure. Um, I'm trying to think. Even my, you know, the most disappointed I ever made my mom. My dad wasn't around very much when I was growing up, so... I mean, we could talk about sports stuff with him, but probably the most disappointing I ever made made my mom was a situation that arised. Oh, it's probably been seven, eight years now. We had a party at our house for the Fourth of July, and out here in mm-hmm. Rapid, my mom came up, my older brother and his family came up, and uh, I. It was a weird day overall. There was a lot of hot feelings between everybody in the family family dynamics the family dynamic was very touch and go sure uh very heated Mm -hmm. and i was trying to be as neutral with everything as possible because it's my house like i can't right this is neutral ground everybody yeah and it it did not work it went to hell in a handbasket fast oh no um so and it and it has caused a riff in the family that still exists today, hmm. I think. So um, maybe maybe that's not a good answer. That maybe she's not disappointed in me, but maybe I'm more disappointed that it happened. I don't know. Okay, moving. That's on. an interesting. That's one. an I, interesting. Yeah, I know some of these questions make really make you think about it. Yeah. Uh, let's do an easy one and then a hard one, and then we'll wrap this up. Okay. Deal. Deal. Uh, if there was a sandwich named after you, what would be on it? A sandwich named after me? Yeah, yeah. If you had your own sandwich, if I had, had a my sub own sandwich, joint, what would be on it? Uh, whew, I'd say triple meat. What kind of meat? I don't know, like ham, turkey, roast beef. Are Tur- you thinking like cold cuts? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, mayo. Maybe a touch of mustard. And. I like provolone cheese, so we'd I love say provolone. provolone cheese. Yeah. What about you? Uh, mine would be more of like a Philly steak sandwich. Ooh. You know, the grilled beef sliced thin on a toasted hoagie bun. Okay. Yeah. Uh, double meat, more meat than bread. I try not to eat a lot of carbs, which would go against everything you had me saw me eat for lunch. Uh, anyway, sliced thin beef of a high quality kind but i love provolone mm. but i would have it with american cheese melted american no mayo no mustard none of that crap you don't like all that stuff just huh? meat and cheese and bread hmm. and i don't know what you'd call it but call it the maruska the maruska <laughs> <laughs> the maruska i'll have the large maruska yep nice um i have one here what happened on your worst date? 
Oh, jeez. This could be with your wife. It could be at, at, in any of your dating history. Wow. Uh, one time in my early years of college, I, this was before my wife and I started dating. I was in the yep. friend zone with my wife at the time. Mm. Unbelievable. And you got out? Dude. I'm a survivor. Congratulate. Anyway, okay, we'll get into that that's later. A that's a story different one. for another episode. Uh, took a girl out to dinner. And on the way back from dinner, back to campus, we were at school. Sure. A car broke down the interstate. Oh. And it was, you know, it's like 10 o'clock at night. I'm a 19-year-old kid, let's say, and I didn't know what to do. Like, what? What do you do? Yeah. What did you do? Well, I ended up calling my brother, who said, call a tow truck, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> But the whole like situation. You're like, oh, by the end of this date, that should be great. Well, at the end, at the end of the day, I felt really dumb because I panicked. I don't panic very often. Sure. And it just, it was terrible. It did not go well. Um, but I, I mean, we still dated for a while, so it wasn't like terrible. So it wasn't terrible. like one and done. She didn't like, you know, call an Uber on the site. This is before Uber was Uber. even a thing. Maybe that's what brought she Uber into. She didn't fruition. call an Uber to come get her and leave me stranded. Sure. Anyway, what's your worst date? Uh, my worst date? <clears throat> wow. Let me tell you a story about young Chris <laughs> in the dating world. Can't even imagine. Oh God! It was no. It was. A, it was a fun time. So it was a group date. Oh yeah, we did a group thing. Um, like how many couples? Or was everybody couples? Well, it, most of the people were couples. Because there's, 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 there's like there's friend some, groups where yeah. you can all go bowling. Right. And there's, I'm making this up, four couples and three single people that just right. hang so out Right. So it was kind of like that. It was like, here's three couples and a couple of stragglers on either side of the fence there. Yeah. Okay. We're on this group date at um, the ice skating rink. The downtown one? The no, not the downtown one, but the Roosevelt. Oh, the ice arena. The not ice the, arena. Not the uh Civic Center ice arena, but the right the whatever. That one. Yes. So I've been there before. Yeah, it's fun. Anyway. Um, so we're skating. I do not skate. <laughs> I, do I not, am not a skater. Full disclosure. <laughs> Chris is not very coordinated in skating yeah. on ice. Yeah. I like to stop if I need to stop instead of... You can stop. You just got to ice it. Anyway, keep going. Yeah. I can ski. I do skiing That's just fine. Totally Skating, different. not fine. Yeah. Okay? Full disclosure on that part. I'm too top heavy. I don't like to go <laughs> ski. <laughs> you're, you're, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're sliding there. Okay, so, anyway. Yeah. Moving on. Um, How'd the ice crack? <laughs> <laughs> can I have to get the Zamboni out? <laughs> anyway. A lot. Um, no. So we're on this date. We're all skating, having a good time, like, you know, and then they have these little walker type mm -hmm. things that slide on the ice. Those are for your beginners. Those, they're like trainers. Those, designed yeah. for like the seven-year-old kid just learning. Yeah. That was my level. Okay. That's where I'm at. I'm doing pretty good with this walker thing. Yeah. And you know, everyone, it's like a typical skating rink. Everyone Going skates in a circle, in a circle yeah, yeah. whatever. And everybody goes in a circle, right? Yeah. So I'm getting really confident with this walker thing. And one of the girls that I'm not on Dating. the date with. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll say that. Yeah. Like my friend's lady that he was dating. We decide, let's race with these walker things because she's kind of at the same level as I am. Yeah. So we are skating with these things and everyone's behind us and we're all having a good time. We're laughing, whatever. My skate gets stuck in one of the grooves from everybody else skating so it's much stuck in like that a track. Yeah, I, I'm in a track now. Yeah, my skate gets stuck, and it locks up my whole leg, and so it's very comical. It's just like anything in like a sitcom TV show that yeah, you stop, I fly over this said Walker thing. <laughs> this is terrible. It's so bad. In front of this girl I'm dating. So she's right behind me. Yeah. And I, so yeah, 
I fly up. I didn't know what was going on. Like you just have that one moment where you're like in slow motion. Yeah. yeah. But you're in real time. Bam. My face hits the ice. I, and then all of a sudden, all I see is red everywhere. Blood. Blood. Total blood. So what, in reality, what happens is Chris decides to open his mouth going like that. (laughs) As I'm flying through the air and I land and I bite through my lip. Oh, no. That's what all the blood is from? I, oh, I see it. Yeah, I have a huge scar because I am ridiculous about doctors, and I don't want to see any doctors you to didn't get go stitches. To the doctor? No, you just let it. Do I just thing. let it. Yeah, Brian, I did. What is this? Seventeen twelve? What are you doing? Seventeen <laughs> twelve. <laughs> just get the shotgun out. He's yeah, he's done. It's over. Take it no, back. But, so shot. yeah, I bit through my lip. Yeah, the girl I was on the date with. Yeah, was right behind me. Yeah, saw this whole thing happen. Yeah. She is nuts about blood. Okay. She doesn't like it. Does not like it. So as soon as the blood shot out everywhere, she passes out. Oh no. (laughs) On the ice right behind me. Oh no. Needless to say, you guys weren't together much longer. No, we were actually together for a while. We kind of laugh about it. Or laughed about it. That's terrible. But um I got free passes to come back to the skating rink. Come try again. To come try again. <laughs> I, don't, I did not cash those in. I did not redeem those gift certificates. I did not redeem those. Let those, me ask you this. Those are a few uh, years old now. Would you say that was more painful or more embarrassing? Both. Which one? There's okay. Be one or okay. The other. I bit through my lips so bad that you could like see my teeth through. Well, I like I should have gotten. Doesn't look good now that you say I should. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I should have gotten <laughs> stitches put in, but I, yeah. I get my pride was hurt enough that yeah. I'm not going to go to the emergency room, which would have cost a lot of money. Yeah. To get stitches, so I put a bandaid on it. That went well. That well, bandaids well, fix everything. Well, you it, asked my two year old bandaids in, fix it. In in my mind, it did. And uh, I kind of regret that now, but well, it is what it, it is. is. It is what it is. So if you see me around and you look at my lower lip and you're like, "Oh, so that's how it I happened." I figured you cut yourself shaving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one, <laughs> and then we're gonna finish up. Chris, what are you currently curious about? Ooh, what am I curious about? I am curious about the state of the union, Brian. Interesting. I know we joke about politics every once in a while, even on here. But I'm I'm really wondering, especially with everything that's going on. I have the other Santa cards. What's really going on with people? Like how divided we really are. Yeah. And I think part of the problem is we think way too much of ourselves. As the center of the universe type thing. Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm not saying that not everyone is important. Everyone is important. But again, if everyone is important, no one's important. Right? Correct. So part of that, you know, is the entitlement that some people get. And they abuse the system. They abuse the power that they get, whatever it is. And then it slights someone else. And then it's just a butterfly effect. It's a never ending snowball shit. Right. And... And with the way the world is right now, yeah. it's very scary. And I think if we took even just a minute out of our day to realize how much of a speck in the sand that we are, we'll have that better perspective to go, well, you know what? Maybe maybe it isn't that important. I was having, this reminds me of a conversation I had with a gentleman that walks outside the office here every day. Sure. He was talking about, what is our level of consciousness? Meaning, you know, at a very low level, your consciousness says that the world revolves around you. Mm -hmm. At the highest level, you are cognizant of how does the world look from a doorknob? Right. Right. Of what does that doorknob's daily life look like? Just getting opened and closed 20 times a day. Right. The people that, have the intelligence to be able to sit down 
and realize that you, Chris, have your own goals, ambitions, daily struggles, you know, whatever. Right. And how I can affect them in my normal day. It's a pretty high level of consciousness of where we're trying to go. Right. The person that you drive by on the way home from work today, that person is a complete stranger to you, but is a mother or father, a daughter, a son, a neighbor, whatever. And Mm -hmm. they have their own dreams and goals and things they like to do. And right. That's what I'm most curious about is what can I do today to help somebody else fulfill a dream to not get in the way of somebody else of somebody dream. else yeah. does that make sense yep like because i can make a decision let's somebody listening to this episode right now statistics say we'll drink and drive this weekend statistics will say that right mm-hmm. that choice of you right now for this weekend to drink and drive home from the concert, from the bar, from the party, whatever. You can ruin somebody else's life by getting into an accident, by running into a pole, you know, whatever the case may be. Right. Yep. By making that choice, you are affecting somebody else's, I don't want to say free will, but you are potentially ruining somebody else's dream. Yeah, their path. Their path. Yeah. Which whatever they're going through, mm-hmm. that's what I'm most curious about. And and how can I either a have the least effect on somebody else's path to not get in their way, sure, but also b affect their path and accelerate them. Yep, that's my answer. <laughs> that's really good. Well, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this get to know your host portion of this podcast. We thought it was re- you know really fun and a new idea to do. And, you know, we just want to say thank you again for listening to us, for following, um, sending and sharing with your friends. You know, we really enjoy doing this and we hope that we brighten your week um, by listening to this. You know, we also have other ways that you can interact with us. We have our Facebook page. We have our website where you can leave us a voicemail, which is a really fun feature that we're really proud of. And we also have our merch available you can uh, buy hats we have some stickers coming and also a few other things along the way so stay tuned with that and that's all i got we're gonna let you the hats range anywhere from 25 to 35 dollars if you buy a hat you get a free sticker if you want just a sticker you basically pay for postage and we'll send you one so it's three bucks on the website we'll get a process and we'll get it mailed out to you um on the facebook page this week Uh, You will find on probably Thursday or Friday, uh, we're going to do a Facebook Live that day, probably on Thursday, uh, talking about a giveaway that we're going to do. We're going to do a two-week giveaway. We're going to give away three or four books that we highly recommend that will help you increase your influence, will help you increase your leadership skills. Um, Very excited to do it. Doesn't cost you anything to enter. All that we ask is that you're going to go to the website and leave us a message, and we'll ship these books off yep. to the winner, and we'll pick them at random. And we also have a special guest that week. Next week. Yep. So anyway, again, thanks, guys, for listening. Um, we truly do appreciate you taking the time out of your day, um, whether you're exercising, driving home, and from work, or whatever the case may be. It's it's truly an honor for Chris and I to be able to spend this little chunk of time with you every single week. Have a great day.